Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. Today's recipe, I'm going to show you one of my favorite sweets, which is a holige. It's also known as boli, ubattu, puran poli across various regions of India. And each home, and in fact, each region has a special way of making it. Traditionally, holiges are made with maida, but today I'm going to be using Ashurwad's 100% whole wheat atta and making these holiges absolutely nutritious and tasty. So without wasting any time, let me just dive right in and show you how to make this dish. So the first step to making the holige is to make the atta, which is the dough. I'm going to be using Ashurvad's superior MP atta, which is made from 100% whole wheat and 0% maida. So into a large mixing bowl, I'm just going to go ahead and add in the atta. To this, I'm just going to add a pinch of turmeric powder, which adds in the color and just a little bit of salt. So the salt sort of cuts down the sweetness from the whole again, makes it taste really nice. So mix all the dry ingredients together. And after that, I'm gonna add a little water at a time and knead it to make a nice smooth dough. So what I love about this atta is that it absorbs all the water beautifully and makes a nice soft and smooth dough. And this soft and smooth dough also makes it very easy to roll out. And that's it. So let's just keep adding a little water at a time and knead it to make a nice soft and smooth dough. So once all the flour has come together, I'm just going to add a little bit of oil on the top and make it nice and smooth. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. And knead it for about a couple of minutes, ensure that it becomes nice and smooth. And after that, we will make the stuffing for the holy cake. And I'll take you through the step-by-step -step process for that. Notice how beautifully the atta has absorbed all the water and this is just perfect and it's really soft. And um, in fact, this atta is really versatile, right? You can make cake, muffins, um, samosas, namak paras, shakar paras and so much more that uh, it brings in a delicious taste to all the different goodies that you make. Wonderful. This looks just perfect. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cover this and keep this to the side and we'll proceed to make the stuffing for the holige. So for the holige, you can either use tur dal or you can use chana dal. I personally like tur dal and we all love the taste of tur dal at home, but chana dal also tastes delicious. And I've soaked the dal for about two hours or three hours and it's important to soak it. The reason is the dal would have fluffed up and absorbed a lot of the water that is required. And when you actually put it in the pressure cooker for cooking, you add in much less water to cook the dal. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add in this uh, soaked tuar dal into the pressure cooker. So the amount of water that you would add into the pressure cooker for cooking the dal is just very little. Add the soaked water as well and after that just check if there is uh, enough water, just about a quarter inch or just a little less than a quarter inch of water above the dal. You just wanted to coat it, you should be able to see the dal granules outside and that's uh, just about enough. And we pressure cook it for about two whistles, we'll turn the heat to low, simmer for about two to three minutes more and then turn off the heat. The dal cooks very quickly, especially the tur dal, uh, when you're cooking it in the pressure cooker. So let me just do that of cooking it for a couple of whistles, simmering for two more minutes and then turning off the heat. So after the pressure was released uh, completely, I opened the pressure cooker and notice how beautifully it's cooked. It's nice and soft and there's very little water remaining. In fact, just enough water or moisture that is required to coat the dal. And this is just perfect. Now what we're going to do is to mash the dal up really well. And after that, I'm going to cook it along with some jaggery to make it like a dough-like consistency. Okay, so let me just give it a brisk stir to mash it or you can use a putty to mash it to mash as well. Wonderful. So into a pan, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of oil. You can also add ghee. And to this, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the cooked dal. You can also add a little bit of turmeric powder to give it that nice color, or you can just let it be. You can also add kesar or saffron strands as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in the jaggery into it, it's powdered jaggery. You can also add uh, the whole jaggery, grate it and then add it. So we'll just keep mixing the jaggery and the tur dal mixture until, it, uh, until the jaggery melts completely and is well combined with the dal. And after that, you will notice that the holy gay mixture right, becomes a little more soggy, it releases more liquid. At this stage, you're gonna keep stirring it until it thickens up and then comes away from the sides of the pan. 
Okay, here's another tip. So if you feel that you've added a little extra water while cooking the dal, then while stirring the jaggery and holige mixture, just add a tablespoon of gram flour, which is a chana dal flour, and um, it'll sort of bind itself together really well. So you don't really have to keep stirring it for a long time until it thickens. So about three to four minutes is what is required for the entire thing to come together. So I've been stirring for about three to four minutes, just about it, that's it, not more than that at all, right? And notice that it's thickened beautifully and it's coming away from the sides of the pan. At this stage, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my cardamom powder. I always like adding the cardamom powder in the end. You can also add nutmeg powder if you wish. Um, the reason is that it brings out the fresh flavors much after. Great, so this is wonderful. Just give it a mix and turn off the heat. Now we're gonna allow this mixture to cool completely before we can fill it and stuff it into the holy gay. And, um, and as it cools, it'll continue to thicken. So another 15 minutes before it cools down, you can place it under the fan or the refrigerator to cool it down fast. Or you can just keep the holy gay mixture in the refrigerator and make holy gays as and when you want, um, you know, at any time of the week. So the holige mixture is cooled down. So I'm just gonna go ahead and divide the dough into uh, large portions, like lemon-sized portions, I would say. It depends upon how large you wanna make it to be. So we'll dust the dough in flour, pat it down, and we're gonna roll it. Dust in flour so that it doesn't stick. And we're going to be placing a large tablespoon of the holige mixture into the center. Wonderful. Spat it down and bring the edges together to the center as well. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is to uh, dust it in flour again, ensure that you press it down so there are no air pockets. And I'm gonna dust it in little extra flour and I'm going to roll it out thin. Holigays are typically extremely thin and that's what I'm going to do, roll out the holigay very thin. Notice how beautifully it rolls out. Absolutely soft. Wonderful. This looks great so I'm just now going to keep this to the side, uh, roll out a few more holigays and then I'll show you how to cook it in a pan. So to now cook the holige into a preheated pan, I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a rolled out holige. And I'm gonna cook it on both the sides, um, not with ghee, but just plain until you see white spots and you see it getting cooked through. Uh, traditionally, the holigays are uh, you know, uh, kept dry and then just before eating, you would smear a dollop of ghee over it or put ghee by the side and dip it in ghee and eat it. But I always like to cook the holige in ghee, so I'm just gonna show you just that. And you can use both versions. You can cook it without ghee and then uh, serve it hot uh, along with some ghee by the side or top it along with some ghee. Okay, so let's just wait for it to cook and then we'll flip it over and cook on both sides. There you go. You can see the beautiful brown spots and I like that crispness that comes along after you cook it with ghee and that's what I love to eat and in fact my entire family too. So I really hope you enjoyed watching the recipe of how to make the whole wheat holige. Wasn't that really simple? It's absolutely tasty and delicious and nutritious too. Do give this recipe a try and when you do, don't forget to share your feedback in the comments below and take a snapshot of it. Tag us across all your social channels and I would love to hear from you. And yes, you can shop all the Ashurwad products in the link uh, which is in the description below or from any grocery store near you. So until then, until next time, happy cooking and healthy eating.